right forward. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, identified as part of this conception are the following. Mathematics is not regarded as static and everlasting, but it is a constantly developing and changing creation of the human mind. The students should be accompanied through the same process. The source of mathematics is intuition and experience that constrain to actual physical observations. Without this, neither mathematical creation nor real understanding can be achieved, so it is important to develop intuition with the help of a handful of experiences <coughs> in every level of education. Mathematical activity is basically theological. It is a sequence of questions, problems, and the attempts to answer them. Teaching mathematics is not a one-sided pressing of knowledge, more a joint activity of the student and the teacher. The teacher acts as an aid in the student's discovery of mathematics. The aim of teaching mathematics is not to pass on recipes of computations for a user with those reflections. It is to provide an introduction to the process of mathematical creation and consequently educate thinking people. Unnecessary formalism is discouraged. The use of a formal language should be introduced only after proper preparations. Finally, the process of mathematical creation is closely connected with playing, and playfulness, the artistic nature of mathematics manifests itself. So, in the rest of my talk, I will develop this uh, fifth point, and I will try to show how it is linked to the other questions. I will quote first uh, a lecture of Karma from 1942, titled The Development of Mathematical Rigor from Intuition to Axiomatic Method. You have the uh, quotations on your handout. Mm -hmm. By describing this development, Kalman goes out to heal that formalist program. However, he refuses the possibility of mathematical creation based purely on formal axiomatic. He says, the formal axiomatic approach is becoming possible. In reality, using it for its own sake would be a game, and not mathematics. Its significance results in its utility as a working principle when it comes to examining various questions within the Hilbert technique theory. Whether arithmetic is free of contradiction or whether all problems of arithmetic or sum system can be solved. According to him, mathematical creation always arises from intuition. Not only the basic notions of arithmetic or geometry as point, line, or surface, but also the most abstract notions. Set theory is perhaps the most abstract branch of mathematics. Nonetheless, at the most rudimentary level of concept formation, we imagine sets intuitively as though they were like sets into which someone has put their elements. There are no mathematicians, however abstract that subject matter might be who do not initially think intuitively, heuristically, during their research. Subsequently, they would cast their results in axiomatic form, thereby camouflaging the hype they arrived at them. The reason to leave uh, the international level of mathematics and the launch of progression of mathematical rigor is in form as is essentially communicative. The major incentive that prompts us to break away from the intuition is, I think, the fact that humans, including mathematicians, are social players. They like to communicate to others what strikes them as, an interest, as interesting and notable. This is why we are in for the first round of disappointments. It turns out that what is obvious to me, based on my intuition, might inspire a part of you from the others. So modern formal mathematical language and axiomatic methods are results of a long development. They are tools helping the exactness of mathematics and have a communication role. Of course, uh, the idea of development is not unique to Karman and to Hungarian mathematicians. In the same period, for example, the French mathematicians, due to a or Lichnerowitz, expressed similar ideas. I had the impression, however, by reading some of the writings, and maybe you, you know them better than me, so please correct me if I'm wrong. <coughs> So that they have a more teleological view on the development of mathematics. The development of process achieved its purpose by, uh, with the introduction of more than formal algebraic language and axiomatic method, which, which is best written to effectively assisting human thinking and providing maximum exactness. Of course, they admitted that there was a crisis in concerning uh, the foundations of mathematics at the, at the beginning of the 20th century, but they thought it was broadly resolved thanks largely to the contributions of the group 
in consequence, according to their principles, uh, the best thing one can do for children's mathematics education is to introduce them into the use of this modern language as quickly as possible. So you can see an example uh, from a French textbook uh, from, uh, uh, from the but not every form. Uh, there is a lot of textbook and uh, and they are very different. So I don't want to think uh, uh, everything is like this. But uh, but I think it realized it, it, it's uh, on the sixth grade, so it's for uh, eleven or, or twelve year uh, or students. The present Italian mathematicians' view on this question is different. They didn't think the foundational crisis was resolved. Gorman and Peter started their research career working in Hilbert School in the 1930s, and an important part of their work arose from their interest in the big negative results concerning the foundations of mathematics, as good as church theorems, and their consequences. Roger Peter presents uh, these theorems at the end of a popular mathematics book, Playing with Infinity, and that finishes the book in this way. This is where I must stop writing. We have come up against the limits of present day mathematical thinking. Our epoch is the epoch of increasing consciousness. In this field, mathematics has done its bit. It has made us conscious of the limits of its, of its own capabilities. But have we come up against final obstacles? Up to the present, there, was always, uh, there has always been a way out of all the good that we encountered in the history of mathematics. There is one point about just proof which uh, we might have to work on the other. It would be necessary to formulate quite precisely what the arguments are that mathematicians today can think of if you wanted to employ the processes of mathematics in connection with such a concept. The moment something is formulated, it's already circumscribed. Every fence encloses a narrow space. The unstable problems that turn up manage to get through the fence. Future development is sure to enlarge the framework. Even if we cannot as yet see how. The eternal lesson is that mathematics is not something static, closed, but living and developing. Try as we may to constrain it into a closed form, it finds an outlet somewhere and escapes around. According to these mathematicians, actual form of mathematics is not the definite form. Moreover, we will never arrive at such a state. Mathematics can never be a perfectly funded, perfectly infundable closed system. The new problems that emerge during the evolution of mathematics will also change its form, its language, and its method of proof. In consequence, the most important aspect of teaching mathematics is not the form, but the process of thinking, the methods to create mathematical notions, concepts, to recognize problems emerging from our previous results, and to develop tools towards the treatment of, the, of these problems. Again, formal mathematical language should appear not as the a priori form of mathematics, but as a mathematical tool to resolve problems. Uh, you have some uh, petitions from Puglia on the handout, uh, I skipped now, but uh, I think it's quite coherent of uh, this view. To end this part of my talk, uh, I put again a counterexample. Uh, this will be again a, a French text from a, a primary school uh, teacher handbook. But again, I don't uh, say it's generally French, it's just uh, an alternative view. A priori, the teacher can only be very puzzled since he has to develop a teaching process taking into account both the nature of mathematics and that of the child. Now, while mathematics is essentially abstract and deductive, psychologists tell us that the child is incapable of log logical reasoning, devoid of ability to synthesize, and that he has an essentially subjective view of the world. So what shall we do? It is, form real, uh, real, it is from reality in all its forms that the teacher intends to make the students understand a law or a mathematical notion previously elaborated by the adult group. He will therefore have to find situations from which the activity, uh, activity of mathematization might be practiced. <coughs> According to this handbook, there is a contradiction between the abstract nature of mathematics and the pedagogical or psychological considerations. Experience manipulation is necessary only because of pedagogical reasons. The book is constructed by lessons, every lesson starting with an experimental activity and concluding with the institutionalization of some real mathematical language. In Hungarian mathematicians' view, the 
there is no contradiction. It is by the nature of mathematics that one should start uh, from intuition and experience with physical objects or you know, in a more abstract level uh, of thinking, um, with thought experience, for example. And if we pro progress into mathematical knowledge, consequently, they don't hurry the introduction of official mathematical notions, theorems or notations, in the teaching process, as they recognize even the manipulation level as a real mathematical activity. In the last part of my talk, I will present an example of a process achieving the introduction of a formal proposition taken from the successful mathematics popularizing book by Lucia Peter, Playing with Infinity, that she wrote during the Second World War and published right after the war. This book is written for the non-mathematician, for people of literature, of the humanities, with the aim to transmit the joy of mathematical creation. The book leads us from the simplest mathematical notions up to the theorems of the Lutheran Church. I have to remark that this book is much more influential, especially in education, than a usual popular science book. For example, the primary school teacher's handbook of uh, 1978 explicitly refers to the background science. In the fourth chapter, the author describes a classroom situation from her own, te own teaching practice, as she worked as a mathematics teacher before the Second World War. And uh, you will find this uh, very familiar because uh, mine represented uh, something very similar as today. So the story starts with a question by a curious young girl. One of my pupils, of about 10, came to me once with the following problem. I already noticed when I was in the primary school that if I add up all the numbers up to an odd number, for example up to 7, I get the same thing as if I multiply this number by its middle. For instance, the middle of 7 is 4, and four time, uh, 7 times 4 is 28. The sum of the numbers up to 7 is like 28. I know this is always so, but I don't know why. Well, I thought to myself, this is an arithmetical solution, right? How should I explain it on this level? In any case, I put it to the class. Susie has an interesting problem. And the following two, two chapters uh, present a long and complex research process based on this problem. And you have on the other side of the uh, a show of this process. So the first problem is quickly resolved uh, by the students. If the student observed that uh, 1 plus 7 is like uh, 4 plus 4 because uh, 1 is 4 plus uh, 3 and 7 is 4 plus 3. And uh, like 2 plus 6 is like 4 plus 4, so uh, it's uh, 7 times 4. And really, I don't know which it is like an exercise book because the pages in an exercise book are joined together in uh, the same way the first with the last, the second with the last part one. The author adds uh, a to this first problem a similar one from the famous story of the young girls, adding up the numbers from 1 to 100. Those solution is quite similar to Eve's one, although not equivalent with it. If solution works with an odd number of elements, goes one with an even number. So the next problem is to find the synthesis of these two procedures. The solution will be uh, the binary method, writing all the series of numbers twice, one under the other, in reverse order and up, uh, add up all the pairs in, in this way and divide the result by two. The next step is to generalize the problem. They notice that the same method works in general on sums of such numbers that succeed uh, one another by eight clusters. In short, they are to treat sums of mathematical series in general. At this point, the author leaves the classroom example but continues the presentation of the, presentation of the research process. She shows that the method, uh, the same type of arguments can appear in other branches of mathematics by presenting a geometrical example, the calculating of areas. After a short explanation about calculating the area of a rectangle, she puts the question how to calculate the area of a right angle triangle. The solution appears to, to be similar to the one concerning the addition of number studies. Why should put in uh, two isometric triangles, one top of the other, as one writes the series of numbers two times one under the other? So. 
This analogy is developed based on the historical examples taken from Euclid, a series of numbers represented by triangles with stars. At the end of the chapter, Roger Peter concludes that we have come through the same argument once in arithmetical, once in geometrical language. We shall see that, uh, that this argument has still a great many more variations. And in the fifth chapter, she shows more variations. <coughs> the starting question of this new chapter is whether we could use the result of our original problem under what circumstances do we have to sum numbers from one to one To give an example, she proposes a new problem which is seemingly quite different. Given a polygon, see an octagon, how many diagonals can I draw in it? Let me notice uh, that the problem like that, the preceding problem, so is general, but we will work using a specific example, in this case an octagon. To simplify the task, the author proposes to modify the problem slightly. Given the eight vertices of, of an octagon, how many ways can we join these up in pairs? Two different solutions are here. According to the first one, the first point uh, can be joined to The first point can be joined to seven other ones. The second can be joined to six. And so, so we have this solution. But the second solution, uh, you have uh, eight vertices. Uh, and every vertice can be joined to seven other one. So you have this solution. So uh, and the author says that we must reach the same result with both ways. So this has to be uh, equal to this. So we have a new solution from the, for the original problem. Rosa Peter presents some more variations on the same time, concerning, for example, a bag with eight parts of different colors, or divide eight children into pairs. Finally, uh, one tries to generalize mathematically to free this group of problems from, the, from their context and formulate it in an abstract mathematical language. This is one of the rare moments in the book where the author introduces the, uh, the formal language of mathematics at a single equality. It is worth to quote here the local conclusion of the author, the end of this part of the text. The above formula is only a symbol and means nothing by itself. Everybody can substitute into it his own experiences. For one, it might mean the counting of the diagonals of polygon. For another, the counting of the number of possibilities for choosing the leading parallel with fitness. The writing down of the formula is an expression of our choice that we can answer all these questions <coughs> of, the, uh, of one argument. In this example, we have seen a quite long and complex uh, uh, research process with using formulas. Arguments proofs are presented only uh, on specific examples, but these examples are always generous. They enable the understanding of general ideas or theorems. Formal language enters only at the end of the process, after having seen many different examples in different contexts, and after having obtained quite a clear idea about the method. The formalization has the generalization, the deconceptualization, the unification of the diverse analogous problems and solutions. In the, in the teaching process, we could continue by propagating the use of this formal tool in other situations, uh, but Rosa Peter did not show this part of the process in her uh, mathematics popularizing book as she promised to her readers to talk about the joy of mathematical discovery without using the Thank you very much.